Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video at ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction House taking a look at some of the guns they have for sale coming up in their April of 2015 premiere auction. There's a bunch of cool stuff here. One of the things that I noticed was a Danish Skobo pistol. I'm going to make another attempt at pronouncing that right. I think I have it this time. Skobo. Uh, these were designed by a fellow named Jens Skobo, uh, who produced, who's best known for producing the Madsen light machine gun. Uh, however, he also produced a 45 caliber pistol for U.S. military pistol trials. Uh, unfortunately, the design he had was a straight blowback, and it, it only worked if you used a special kind of ammunition in it that had a very light 63 grain projectile. It was actually an aluminum jacketed uh, wood bullet that was going very fast, about 1600 feet per second. Uh, that wasn't what the U.S. Army was looking for, so they threw the gun out of their trials. However, he had also manufactured a version of this pistol in 7.65 millimeter Browning, more commonly known over here in the States as 32 Auto, 32 ACP. Um, his 32 caliber guns worked great. Um, they were also simple blowback. They were in fact the exact same design as the 45, but smaller, and the design worked well with a 32 caliber. So what we have here is actually one of his 32 caliber guns. Um, about a thousand of these were made. They were, they're well-made guns, they're, they're well-built, they were reportedly quite reliable, and they were good guns, they just didn't sell well. Um, they're a little bit bulky compared to some of the other 32s that were available on the market at the time. We'd be looking at about 1903, um, this is a model, known as a model of 1903. Um, production went for a couple years, but not very long. So, why don't I bring the camera back here and let's take a closer look at how this works, because it's got some really cool little features in it. So, our 32 caliber Scobo, it's, it looks kind of awkward, it feels a little weird in the hand. You only have enough room on the grip for two fingers, your third finger comes below, but there's quite a lot of bulk up above the grip, which, yeah, it's a little bit of an odd feeling gun. Um, reportedly though, they worked quite reliably. Um, the sight picture is this kind of, a little bit unusual, it feels kind of tall. Um, the bore axis is pretty high on this, but then again, it's a 32, so shouldn't make that much difference. Uh, for manual controls, we have a safety over on this side. This is fire, that is safe. So it is correct in that it's easy to disengage from a firing grip, push it down and you're ready to fire. We have a magazine release here on the bottom, and there's an interesting feature to the magazine release as well. Actually, a couple of them. First off, the magazine release uh, the magazine spring is the same spring that is used for the hammer, which we'll take a look at inside in a moment. We also have a two-position magazine release. So if I pull the magazine out, you can see that there's a notch cut in it here at the bottom. And that actually functions when I insert the magazine. The mag catch will, will latch into that little notch, which holds the magazine in the gun securely, but it holds it too low to actually feed cartridges. Uh, British Webley semi-auto pistols in the, the 1910s did this as well. The idea is that this is a magazine cutoff. You can single load cartridges until you actually need the magazine, and then you pull the catch back, push the magazine in the rest of the way, and now it locks under the bottom of the magazine, which puts it in the right position to feed cartridges semi-auto. That pretty much covers it for the controls on the outside. Now, disassembly on these is extremely simple. It's really quite cool. We have this serrated surface on the back. All I have to do is push in on that and push the whole top assembly up. We now have our frame here, and then we have a slide assembly and a barrel assembly. Comes apart very quickly and very easily. In the top part, the slide, let the camera focus here, we have a spring-loaded firing pin, pretty nicely done, pretty typical. We also have our recoil mainspring up there, which is connected to this. So the way that this interacts with the frame is that this uh, ledge at the back of the frame sits inside there. And when the slide goes backward, that ledge of the frame holds the recoil spring in place and forces it to contract. So that's pretty simple. The barrel here is very simple. We've got our feed ramp 
built into it right there. Not a whole lot else going on. The one other thing we do have is this hook. That hook connects to this bar in the front of the frame. So the barrel assembly sits in the gun like this. Now a few things to take a look at. This two-stage mag release is not really a good idea. There's a lot of mag a lot of tension on the magazine spring. There we go. Inside here, this is again the exact same design as the 45 caliber Scobo. It is hammer fired. That's the hammer. So our trigger mechanism is the same as in the full size 45 caliber Scobo. We have this yoke that goes around the magazine and it pushes on our sear here, which drops the hammer. So uh, when it's disassembled, you can pull this piece out easily. When the slide assembly is on the gun, it holds it in the correct position to use. So overall, a very, very simple little pistol. Um, oh, one other thing I want to show you. If we can see down inside there, the spring, there's actually a long flat spring that acts as both the hammer spring and the magazine catch spring. So if you look at this uh, rod that comes off the bottom, you can see that when I put pressure on the hammer, it actually moves slightly. What's interesting is that in addition to being this clever system for using one spring to do two different jobs, this also acts as a cock cocking indicator. It's kind of a shame that these didn't take on, take off commercially. They're really not a bad pistol. I think really they're just a bit awkward in size and shape and they didn't do anything that couldn't really be done with other guns just as well. Well, thanks for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. This is definitely a pistol you don't see very often. It was cool to get to take a look at it. If you'd like to add it to your own collection of, say, Danish semi-auto pistols, it'd be a very small collection, but this would be a really cool one to add to it. It is for sale here at Rock Island coming up in April. And uh, I have a link right below here to the Rock Island catalog page on it. You can take a look at their pictures, their catalog description, and all the info you need is there to set up an account, place a bid online, or come down here to Illinois and try bidding in person. Thanks for watching.